Okay, so let's move forward to the Jenkins uh, continuous integration tool. So here we are going to talk about the uh, what continuous integration is all about and what is and why Jenkins and we'll talk about Jenkins architecture and flow of operations. Uh, we'll talk about some of the plugins you can add to the Jenkins uh, and how to get started and uh, then configuring Jenkins and we'll talk about some fingerprint capability of Jenkins and uh, then distributed building and the Jenkins best practices and alternative solutions. What is and why continuous integration? So continuous integration is a software development practice where members of a team integrate their work frequently. So whenever they make a change, they want to integrate their change to the source code uh, version control system right away so that uh, the result of it could be uh, uh, could be uh, could be uh, could be detected uh, as soon as possible. So each integration is verified by automated build uh, to detect integration errors as quickly as possible. So this is actually uh, proposed by Martin Fowler a long time ago and these days continuous integration tool is indispensable tool in pretty much all software organizations. So principles of continuous integration. So maintain a code repository. So you have to, have to you have to have a code repository somewhere, SVN or JIT. Uh, those are two. Uh, JIT is probably uh, the most popular, uh, the uh, code uh, repository scheme. And the automate the build. So whenever you make a change, you check in the change, and you are going to let the build done right away. Okay. And of course, that part of the uh, the build should include uh, the testing. So that uh, you know, whenever um, whenever change is made, uh, testing is done right away, so that uh, uh, you know what's going on. Everyone commits to the baseline every day. So in uh, instead of waiting for a week uh, to check in all your changes, which used to be the case a long time ago, now you know you are supposed to make a change as frequently as po you're supposed to check in your changes as frequently as possible so that those changes are integrated and tested as part of the uh, automatic test process. Every commit should be built uh, and keep the build fast, test in a clone of the production environment and uh, make it easy to get the latest deliverable. So idea is that because things get built as soon as the change is made, uh, the deliverable is always available. Uh, every, everyone can see the result of the latest build. Okay? And automatic uh, deployment is also possible. So benefits of continuous integration is uh, constant availability of a current build for testing, demo, or release purposes. Okay? Uh, you don't have to actually have a release engineering to you know the uh, to start the build and wait for a few days to get the build okay uh, so in CI everything gets built uh, almost instantly well instantly meaning depending on your perspective but you know as frequently as possible uh, immediate feedback to developers on the quality functionality and system-wide impact of the code they are writing uh, is possible so you know every developer will get the immediate feedback for the change he or she has made uh, matrix generated from automated testing and CI uh, such as uh, code coverage code complexity uh, will help developers write quality code Okay. So one of the key reasons using continuous integration tools such as Jenkins is that you can see the trend of, for example, number of bugs, uh, you know, the performance. Uh, so by having this trend information available to every stakeholder, developer or manager or tester, you know, you can actually see uh, whether you're doing okay or not. Uh, developers detect and fix integration problems continuously so you know you can avoid last minute chaos in release date okay so you ba basically get the early warnings of broken or incompatible code you get early warnings of conflicting changes if multiple uh, if changes are made from multiple people uh, on the same code sometimes uh, it causes some conflict but you want to actually find that out as soon as possible uh, immediate unit testing of all changes uh, because continuous integration should include the testing uh, whenever change is made uh, the unit testing should be done uh, so CI impact continuous integration 
will impact pretty much all software cycles like a build management, release management, deploy automation, and test orchestration. So pretty much all uh, stakeholder in the stakeholders in the software development and the life uh, and the phases are all impacted by the continuous integration. So now we understand why continuous integration is important and useful to software organization. Now let's talk about what is and why Jenkins. Jenkins is a popular continuous integration tool, a, serve, a continuous integration server or tool. Uh, it's a deriv derivative of Hudson. Okay, so now Hudson and Jenkins are two popular uh, continuous integration server, and uh, they in fact share the same uh, code base. Uh, key features of Jenkins are uh, you know, it's very easy to install. You download the raw file and uh, the only thing you have to do is just run the raw file. So Java dash jar and the name of the raw file and the port number. There is no extra installation or configuration. Everything is just done with a single command. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Uh, so, you know, if you want to have more robust employment, uh, deployment, then you can actually use, uh, you can deploy it in a serverless container, uh, the, such as Tomcat. Okay? Uh, but uh, for the sake of this development, you know, we are going to just use uh, Java.jar Jenkins War and uh, port 9001. And once you are running uh, Jenkins, you can do easy. Com you can do configuration. It's very easy, and it can be done through web-based interface, meaning through the browser. So Jenkins can be configured entirely from uh, its friendly web UI uh, with extensive on-the-fly error checks and inline help. Okay, so uh, it will detect whatever you make a mistake. You know, on your uh, when you enter some incorrect value, it will let you know, and it does have a lot of inline help. Okay. Uh, there is no need to tweak XML manually anymore. There is no XML things involved. Uh, the change set support. So Jenkins generate the list of changes made to the build from SCM systems such as CVS, Subversion, or JIT, or many others. Okay. Uh, so uh, uh, basically, as you are going to do in the hands-on lab, uh, you know, for each project, you are going to specify uh, which uh, the uh, source control management system you want to use. Uh, in, in our case, we are going to use Subversion and JIT in our hands-on labs. Okay. Uh, uh, permanent links. Jenkins gives you clean, readable URLs for most of its pages, including some perma links like latest build, latest successful build, and things like that. So it's actually easy enough to see what's going on for your, you know, his historical data. Uh, and uh, it does have RSS and email and instant messaging integration. So whenever something needs to be notified, uh, you know, you could you could use email or instant messaging or RSS. Uh, after the fact tagging, so builds can be tagged long and long after builds are completed. So you can actually tag in a particular build uh, with more English-like description. Uh, JUnit and TestNG test reporting. So uh, JUnit test and pretty much all the testing schemes, uh, functional testing, integration testing, they could be all included in your test report. Uh, distributed to build. So when you need to actually perform, you know, continuous integration for a pretty large project, you might in fact have uh, master and slave architecture on Jenkins. Uh, so. Uh, it, in that case, it will involve multiple computers through master and slave architecture. Uh, file finger printing. So Jenkins can, Jenkins can keep track of which build produced which jars and which build is using which version of jars and so on. So we're going to talk about the concept of fingerprinting later on in a bit more detail. Basically, you know, when multiple uh, pieces of codes are integrated, you want to know you know which version of what job file it has a dependency on what version of that job file and things like that so fingerprinting will actually kind of let you know uh, the uh, you know the, uh, the the integrated let's say detailed integration of these pieces okay? so we're going to actually talk about these things in a bit more detail uh, plugin support Jenkins is built in uh, built as a built based on plugin systems. So uh, Jenkins can be extended uh, via a lot of uh, plugins. In fact, there are lots of lots of plugins out there. Okay, 
and you can certainly write your own plugins. Uh, let's talk about the architecture and flow of operations. So this is how things work. Okay. So this is a version control system such as a JIT or a subversion in the middle and uh, the coders or developers will check in their changes to this uh, code control uh, source control system. Okay. And uh, then we have a CI server, in this case uh, Jen Jenkins or Hudson. So Jenkins and Hudson, uh, in this case Jenkins, will actually talk to this uh, uh, source control system uh, on a periodic basis. And whenever there is a change, it will be built. So we have a build service here. Okay? And uh, then uh, Jenkins manager you know, we'll actually take a look at what's going on. So Jenkins will give some feedback in the middle here, okay, with this, and uh, then the information will be managed and controlled, uh, viewed by the uh, uh, Jenkins manager. So flow of operations. So this is a little bit of repeat of what I just said. So developers check in changes to version control system, and the Jenkins then pulls the version control system such as JIT regularly for changes uh, for example like every minute so if changes are detected then new code is checked out to build servers and the build is then uh, will be performed new build of your project will be executed and uh, then results are reported back to Jenkins server and uh, then you know you can see the status of the project stable unstable or failed Okay. And then notifications are sent to developers and other stakeholders. And the stakeholders either fix any problems found or proceed to implement new features. Uh, plugins. Uh, plug as, 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 I, as I said, uh, Jenkins is designed to be extensible through plugins. Okay. Uh, by default, some plugins are pre-installed. So CVS, SVN, Maven, and SSH, those are uh, plugins that are pre-installed and you can actually install other plugins through the UI. So available plugins. So if you go to uh, you know managed uh, plugins, uh, plugin manager uh, page, you can click available and you can see all the plugins that are available uh, for extending your uh, Jenkins. And uh, you can find in this case I'm just searching for JIT. Okay. Uh, static code analysis plugins. Static code analysis plugins uh, uh, provide a common visualization backend that produces the trend graph for code analysis tools. So again, uh, code analysis plugins are one of the popular plugins that you can install to your Jenkins. So you know it will give you a, a, a graph like what you see on the slide uh, to see you know, whether your code is actually meeting. Uh, the uh, the guidelines of your code uh, static code analysis. Uh, so these are static code analysis tools people use: Findbox and Dry and CheckStyle and the Warnings and Task Scanner. And for now, Findbox is probably the most popular uh, static code analysis tool people use. So how do they work with Jenkins? The code analysis plugin does not actually run the code analysis to tools. It actually analyzes the output of these tools. So basically, uh, the process of Findbox is as follows. Jenkins calls the build tool to run Findbox. And Findbox writes its result to an XML file. And then static code analysis plugin analyzes this XML file and generates the port page. So the actual, you know, the, uh, the uh, um, um, uh, code analysis done by the static code analysis tool, but uh, basically Jenkins will collect the data result, uh, result data, then display into a graph, for example. Okay, moving forward, how to get started with the Jenkins? So you download the Jenkins WAR file from Jenkins website and you unzip it. Uh, then you're going to get the Jenkins version WAR file, and again, only thing you have to do is just running it. Java-jar Jenkins.war, and uh, you specify the port number. Okay. Uh, or you can again deploy this WAR file into any Java E container, uh, uh, such as Tomcat, Glassfish, Jetty, WebLogic, WebSphere, WebStone, uh, Winstone. So if you want to have a production, uh, you know, the uh, production quality server to uh, deploy Jenkins, uh, you certainly can do that over these servers. 
Uh, so studying Jenkins is pretty straightforward. So this is the uh, screen capture of studying Jenkins, Java dash jar and Jenkins war and port number. And then you should be able to go to uh, uh, localhost colon 9001 and this is your first Jenkins UI screen. Okay, and uh, then you can manage Jenkins to install the new plugins and uh, create a new project and things like that. Uh, configuring Jenkins. So configuring Jenkins is pretty straightforward. Again, everything is done through uh, UI. So in this case, I'm uh, configuring JIT uh, with uh, JIT exe file. Okay. Uh, uh, you can specify the full path of JIT. Well, if you have a JIT in your path, then you can just uh, say JIT. Okay. Uh, because Jenkins will use JIT to let's say check out the code and you know things like that so you need to actually specify the location of the JIT and that's part of your configuration you have to do. Uh, configuring build trigger so you know the basically if you want your uh, project to get built every five minutes uh, or if you want to get it built every time somebody checked in the code uh, that's where you are going to specify the build trigger. Okay. Uh, con configuring test report. So if you want to actually see the testing result, uh, then you can actually specify the location of testing result XML file. Okay. So we're going to do all this in our hands-on app. Okay, fingerprint. Uh, so basically, as I said before, you know, the fingerprint is a way to make sure pieces are in fact aligned. Uh, so let me actually kind of explain through the bullet. When you have uh, independent projects on Jenkins, it often becomes hard to keep track of which version of this is used by which version of that. So you know, Jenkins supports file fingerprinting to simplify this. So example scenario is like this. Suppose you have a top project that depends on middle project, which depends on bottom project. Uh, now you're working on bottom project, but top team project reported the bottom job that they are using causes the null point exception uh, which you thought you fixed at the bottom uh, number 32. So Jenkins will tell you in fact you know uh, the which middle build will using what version of your bottom job file. Okay? Uh, so that when you know the uh, another project team actually uh, indicating something is wrong uh, you can certainly say that ah give me the uh, you know number uh, of the uh, of my file that you're using so at least there should not be any confusion in terms of uh, which one is using what version of what. Uh, so this is how you can set up the fingerprint to make this work all relevant projects need to be configured to record fingerprints on, of their job files. Okay. Um, so yeah so I'm going to actually move forward a little bit because uh, we are not going to do this hands-on lab. Okay, so distributed building. So we're not going to actually do this one in our hands-on lab either because it involves multiple computers. But you can actually do configure Jenkins in the master-slave architecture. Okay. So master is the installation of the Jenkins and it serves all HTTP requests and it, uh, it also builds project if zone. And slaves are computers that set up to build project for a master. So you know Jenkins server will, master will actually let the slaves to build things. Okay, uh, so Jenkins runs a separate program called the slave agent on the slaves, and master start slave agents on demand. So if master itself is just the uh, too small for the large amount of build, you know it can actually delegate the build to its slave aid, slaves uh, machines. Okay. Uh, additional workload on building projects are delegated to multiple slave nodes and provides different environment needed for build and test. Okay, so uh, Jenkins best practices: all the secure Jenkins, uh, backup Jenkins home regularly, and file fingerprinting to manage dependencies. Uh, the most oops, sorry about that. Uh, most reliable builds will be clean builds, which are built from the source control, source control, uh, source code control. Uh, integrate tightly with your issue tracking system like a Jira or Bugzilla to reduce the need for maintaining a change log. Yeah, so this is actually pretty important. And always configure your job to generate trend report and automate automated testing when running a Java build. So it's important. Again, the key aspect of continuous integration tool is a uh, key benefit of a continuous integration tool is you can see the trend. Okay, so every time a build is done, you know you can actually see how many bugs are in fact actually introduced. Uh, 
uh, what is the performance data? So when you have actually uh, continuously built, uh, you can see the trend of those. Okay, so that's very important. Set up Jenkins on a partition that has most free disk space. And kind of obvious. Uh, in terms of alternative solutions, so open source Hudson is again, uh, you know, the uh, Jenkins is derived from Hudson. Now they are actually running. They are being run by different organizations. Apache Continuum is another uh, CI server. Cruise Control, Tinderbox, uh, commercial they have a Bamboo, Team City, Team Foundation server, and Rational Teams of cons uh, Concert, Rational uh, Team Concert. But for now, I see most people are using Jenkins. Uh, even Jenkins versus Hudson, I think Jenkins is winning. All right, so that is the end of the presentation. So let us do the hands-on lab. Okay. Uh, you are going to download the Jenkins. So if you go to this website, uh, you are going to download Jenkins. It's you know basically uh, uh, let's see what is the download. Yeah, so if you click download, yeah, so you specify whatever your OS platform, then you are basically downloading a WAR file. Okay. All right. So download that WAR file. And uh, then uh, now uh, download and install JIT package if you have not done so yet. Okay, so uh, you know we are going to use a JIT later on in our exercise. Uh, so uh, make sure that you are installing JIT. Okay, from here, and then you can start the Jenkins. Uh, so basically, uh, you know I'm going to actually run this Jenkins. Okay, so Jenkins is getting started. Then we should be able to get to uh, localhost 9001. Okay, so let me make sure that is okay. Loaded all jobs. So we are going to wait until Jenkins is fully up and running. Let me see what is done. So you can go to localhost 9001. All right, so let me just continue. And uh, first, we are going to install a JIT plugin. So you click Manage Jenkins, and uh, then Manage the plugin, manage plugins. Yeah, here they go. Okay. So I'm going to just use the lab documentation. And uh, then you are going to search JIT. So, first of all, you want to go to available and then search JIT. And uh, then there is a JIT plugin. So, you want to select this one and install without restart. Okay. And uh, then you want to configure. Uh, the uh, the system Jenkins system. So again, uh, go to manage Jenkins again. Uh, this time, click configure system, and then configure JIT. So here, uh, in the middle of the you know the configuration, uh, you want to actually specify the location of your JIT executable. Okay, uh, if uh, JIT is already available in your path. I mean, if it is actually set uh, in your path, then you can just say JIT.exe file. Okay. And then save. Then you have to restart the Jenkins. Okay. So I, in my case, I have already done that. Okay. So let me just go to. Okay. So manage Jenkins. So configure system. Yeah, so JIT. Yeah, so it's already done for me. Okay. All right. And then, you know, you want to restart it. 
Uh, exercise two is you are going to use Jenkins to uh, you know for Apache Commons I/O open source project. So uh, you know you are going to create a brand new job. So the way you are going to create create a brand new job is a new item, and then you give a name Apache Commons dot I/O. Okay, and uh, and freestyle project. Typically you're gonna create a freestyle project like this. Okay, and okay. And then you have to specify source control management. Uh, you have to select source control management. In this case, Apache Commons.io is using SVN. Okay, so you know you are going to specify uh, so source control management of your project. You are going to select the version, and then you specify the repository URL. So this is the location where uh, Jenkins will actually go out and uh, get the data, get the get the source code. Okay, and then you save. Then you can actually build the project. So this is actually manual. You are manually building a project. Build now. Then you are going to see uh, things are being built. Okay. So let me actually see. Uh, I have already. Uh, so I have uh, Jenkins. Yeah. So I have uh, these jobs already. Okay. And uh, I can build now, so you know it has been built before, and now I can build. So you can see it's being built. Yeah, January first, eleven thirteen. Yeah, it's being built. Okay. Okay, so you can actually see the output of that build. Okay. Uh, and you can actually see the information of the particular builds. If you click this guy. Uh, for example, if you click this guy, you know you can certainly see more information about the uh, 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 that particular build. Okay, and uh, detailed information. Yeah, so we just saw the detailed information. Uh, we can also try the build periodically. So you know we can change the build trigger configuration. So again, go to configure, and uh, then build trigger. So what we want to do is you know we want to build it every five minutes or something like that. Okay. So this is the inline help. Okay, so go to build figures, and if you click this guy, it gives you detailed uh, help information. Okay, uh, so here I'm going to actually specify h slash 10 star 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 star. That means you know I want to build this one 10 minutes after each hour. That's basically what it does. And save. Okay, and then you are going to see. In fact, you know it's being built every. Uh, let's see. Yeah, from this point on, it's going to be built in you know, a five minutes after after each hour and things like that. Okay, all right. So I'm gonna let you do the exercise until exercise two, and then I'm going to uh, explain exercise three. Okay, so I'll give you guys about fifteen minutes to do exercise one and two. All right. So let me uh, continue the explanation of exercise three and. Uh, um, so exercise three is we are going to now uh, use Jenkins for Pet Clinic Maven project using JIT. Okay, so uh, you are going to go uh, the uh, Pet Clinic SDK project. So it's provided under Samples Maven of your Tools Maven Jenkins uh, directory. Okay, uh, so here uh, first of all uh, you're gonna say JIT in it uh, is basically having your source code under JIT. Okay, so it's gonna create the Dutch in it, uh, uh, you know, directory. Okay, now you're going to say JIT add uh, colon. Then basically, what it does is that place every file under the current directory into what is called the staged state. Okay, uh, that is actually intermediate state before you are making a, a commit. Okay, so we're gonna actually have that JIT uh, add. So typically you're going to actually add, you know, a couple of files, but here we are actually adding everything, okay, just for the sake of the uh, simplicity. And then we are going to commit uh, our first commit. Uh, this is the message. So we are going to uh, make initial commit. Okay, so it's committed. Okay. All right, now we are going to create the uh, brand new job. So you're going to say. Uh, in a new item and you're gonna say pet clinic and uh, then you have to specify uh, the uh, repository URL so that repository URL because we are you know the uh, uh, 
the repository in the local file system, you are going to specify this location. File colon slash 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 and this one has to be instead of my project in our case in my case I has to be uh, labs tools build Jenkins samples maven pet clinic SDK something like that okay uh, for the uh, uh, for Linux and OX you can specify this okay all right so I specify the URL so that's the location uh, the uh, the Jenkins will go to uh, in this case it's going to go to local file system to find out if there are any check-ins and then you are going to select poll SCM uh, as a build trigger so build trigger is basically you know how you're going to actually start the build okay so in our case we are using poll SCM meaning we are going to use a poll scheme so on the build trigger select poll scheme star 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 five star means that you are asking uh, the Jenkins to poll every minute Okay, so we like to actually have a Jenkins to check in you know, every minute to our uh, the uh, local repository uh, to see if there are any change. Okay, and then you also have to say invoke top level Maven target at build build step. So how are you gonna actually build it? So we're gonna actually build uh, using Maven and the goals Maven goals is going to be clean and build, uh, clean and install. So it's going to clean first and then it's going to install. Okay, and then you save it. Okay, and then you can manually build it. Okay, uh, to see whether it builds okay, right? So click build, and it should actually build. Okay, and uh, then what you're gonna do is now you're gonna make a change to JIT. So you are going to add another file called the readme.txt file under the directory. Okay, and uh, then you are going to make a change. Uh, the you know first change, uh, so meaning you're making a commit. So you're gonna actually uh, commit. And uh, you can actually take a look at the status of your uh, JIT uh, the, by calling JIT status, and uh, there is nothing to commit. Okay, so everything is committed. Okay, and then you can see the build is going to be automatically done for you because uh, every time you make a change, meaning every time you check in, meaning you commit, uh, Jenkins will take a look at that JIT uh, repository uh, every minute and it will build it for you. Okay, so you should actually see. This one gets automatically built, okay? And uh, you can certainly take a look at it, and uh, you can see what has been changed. It will tell you what has been changed, okay? Okay, so that is exercise three. So it's actually kind of you know the uh, to get the uh, uh, your uh, pet clinic application uh, into your JIT, and then uh, to be uh, uh, you know managed by Jenkins in terms of its build, okay? Uh, let me actually continue exercise four and five, and then I'm going to give you guys to time, you know, hands-on lab time to finish them up all. Okay. Okay. So now we want to see whether there are in fact any bugs, you know, the whenever build is done. We also, you know, you also want to see the trend, right? Okay. So again, one of the key benefit of using uh, CI is to see the trend. So if the number of bugs that are being found is increasing then you know something is not right in your environment okay in your development environment if it is decreasing then you're doing something something good okay all right so we are going to configure publish JUnit test result report as a post build action okay so we are using same pet clinic job okay and uh, you are going to uh, you know the uh, you're going to publish JUnit okay so under uh, go to the uh, click configure in the post uh, dashboard and then add post build action okay so you know there is add post build action then you are going to see this bunch of actions and then what you want to select is the publish JUnit test re test result report okay yeah so if you click this guy you're gonna see this bunch of options you select this sel select this guy and click save okay and then for test uh, report XML uh, XML file this is where you are going to specify the location so this XML file test report XML file gets automatically like, automatically created okay by the build okay so Jenkins will actually take a look at this XML file and then uh, do the report okay you specify it and then you save it and then if you do manual build okay uh, you know you it's going to you, you just do the manual build to see whether build now contains the test report 
okay so build now and you're going to see the build is done then once it is done if you click this guy you should actually see test result now okay so when you click test result now you're going to see test result okay there is no failures okay uh, so now we are going to actually artificially add some test fa test failures uh, in the code and then commit a change and see whether uh, the Jenkins will detect it okay so what you want to do is you go to uh, the uh, you go to uh, owner test uh, owner test that Java file okay and then you're gonna add these three test failure cases okay so it's you know you're basically uh, assert equals you know we are just saying one equals two and one equals two and one equals two I mean obviously, obviously this will all fail right okay so we introduce three failure cases okay and then we commit this change so first you are going to add this file okay uh, into staging area and then you're gonna commit with a message test failure implanted and uh, then if you say G status there should not be anything to commit okay and then you should actually observe that Jenkins will build it because you check in the change you commit a change right so you know it's automatically building it and uh, then when you see the test result you are going to see in fact three failures and you can see you know which test failed right here three failures okay and uh, now we move the implanted code and reduce the number of failures and commit the change and observe that build now reflects the change okay so you are going to actually see this is a test trend you can see there is no failure and then it will actually increase yeah so this graph should be three uh, in the beginning I have only one failures so it should actually go you know three and then it goes down to zero okay so this is the test result trend which is quite useful okay alright so that is exercise four so that is actually try to see uh, test failures and the trend of those test failures Exercise 5 is now performance trend we'd like to see. So here we are going to install performance plugin and uh, you know we'll see how the performance uh, you know is actually trending. Okay. So you're going to install the performance plugin. So go to available and if you type performance, there is a performance plugin. So install performance plugin. Okay. And then you want to restart Jenkins. Every time you install plugin, you have to restart. Okay, so you can just click, uh, yeah, so you can restart the plugin, control C and just restart, okay. And then we are going to set the publish performance test result report for pet clinic job. So here are uh, the uh, post build actions, okay, publish, uh, so you should actually see publish performance, performance test result uh, report because we just added a plugin, okay and uh, then you know so here you can actually take a look at the uh, you know the help screen okay uh, so yeah so this is actually already done for you so there is nothing much you want to do okay uh, you know plugin plugin will do the things for you okay now here we are going to artificially uh, change code in simple JDBC clinic that Java file so we are artificially adding code to slow things down okay all right and uh, then you are going to uh, you know add that code into staging area then you commit okay now you're going to see performance trend so you know you so once you execute you know once you build it you are going to see the performance trend is gonna be I actually see uh, yeah so this is a performance uh, performance data I, I actually see something Oh yeah, so the uh, uh, so the performance data is supposed to be you know somewhere here. I should actually capture a different picture. So performance data is for based on unit testing, okay? So there is a unit tester unit testing of this uh, store pad code, okay? So you know the every time it does the unit testing, it will actually come out. It will actually detect the performance data. Then it will uh, give you the the, uh, uh, the graph of this, okay? Uh, I should actually. Oh okay, so this is actually, yeah. I think this is a performance data, okay? All right. 
Uh, okay, so that is the end of uh, this hands-on lab. Okay, so right now it's 40, and I'll give you guys about 30 minutes to do this exercise, and let's have a 30 minutes lunch time. So we'll be back at 1:40. Okay, but if you actually finish up earlier, then we can start earlier as well. Okay.